and welcome to Knit Grit. My name is Cody and in today's tutorial we are going to go over how to make this really adorable little witchy hat. I made this one last season and I can tell actually how far I've come with my techniques and everything. Um, I made this one last night with the same pattern. I kind of keep all of them in my little notepad thing on my iPhone so I was able to replicate that pretty quickly. I did do one thing different on this hat which was I staggered my increases, which I have an entire tutorial on down below if you really want me to go in depth in that. I have that linked down below in my crochet one-on-one -on -one playlist. You can get all the information there, but essentially we're going to be increasing a bunch along this and I'll explain how I do that. I used two different yarns making this. This is Red Heart Soft and I believe that is some Heartland Lion Brand Heartland right there. This, however, is the Lion Brand Heartland, but it's this fuzzy, like, two-tone-ish. Let me see if I can show. It's got all of these freckles and speckles, which actually adds to the weight of the yarn. So I would definitely be careful in what weight you use for your yarn. This is in this. These both are considered the same exact weight. They are both size 4, medium weight. However, this is 100% thicker because of all of these added fluffs. It's just not so dramatically different that it's in a different weight class, essentially. So in today's video, I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to be using some Lion Brand Heartland over here. I'm going to be making a an orange hat with a black band. So this part is going to all be orange and then the little band here is what I'm going to make black. I think it's super cute. This will fit any Luna doll. This will fit on any of the Among Us characters that I've made. I think it's super cute and adorable. I really like how this turned out. You can cover your little gourd uh, stem and hat with that if you want to put it on one of your Luna pumpkin jacks or you can put it on your little bunny here. I am going to be doing a black cat sometime in the next week or so. Might not be before Halloween, but it is inspired by Halloween because let's face it, I celebrate Halloween all of the time. I don't do enough amigurumi that's Halloween themed, but honestly I should because I absolutely adore Halloween. All right, enough of a tangent on that. I am, however, going to explain that we need these two yarns. This is my, again, size four medium worsted weight yarn. I am going to be using the Lion Brand Heartland for this. I just like the heathered two-tone-ish. It's really nice and handsome. I like how this yarn really looks. I'm going to be using this. I'm also going to be using a darning needle. This is just a basic blunt tip darning needle for when I do my sewing and hiding all of my tails. I am also going to be using my Furls Crochet Hook. It is in a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter. Affiliate links are down below. I have an affiliation with them. So just to be completely transparent, I love them, however, and I've been using them since before I was lucky enough to become an affiliate. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin this, you are going to want to grab your... I'm going to move everything out of the way, actually, first. You are going to want to grab your main color, so whatever you are starting and you want to have go all the way down here. If you want to make stripes, you can do that. However, you're going to want to start with whatever your main tip is. We're going to be doing top down, essentially, for this. This is a top down pattern. We are going to create a nice six inch tail and we're going to create a slip knot. For this tutorial, you're going to want to know and be comfortable with single crocheting, working in the round, making a slip knot, as well as doing some increases. But other than that, it's a fairly simplistic pattern and I'm going to post up a pattern here where it describes the entire pattern. So if you wanna take a screenshot of that, you may. I will also have a printable PDF for this down below, which will be free for the first week for everybody who clicks on it this week. If you're past this week, make sure to say subscribed because I do post patterns that are free for the first week for all of my subscribers for every single tutorial that I post up here. So definitely subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified about that. However, I am going to also post a little thing down here that describes every little bit that I'm doing. All right, so we're going to create a slip knot and I'm going to do what I call my magic ring. I have a tutorial, again, down in Crochet 101 if you're not familiar with these terms. This is an intermediate pattern, so you're going to want to be comfortable with all of these terms. I'm also going to try to go slow enough that people can follow. Essentially, my magic ring is me chaining two. So chain one and chain 
two. We have two chains and we're gonna go skip our second chain that we just created and go back into our first. We're going to place six single crochet inside of that loop right there. Two. This is older yarn, so I'm not sure how it's gonna respond to this hook. Three. Four. Five. And this is our last one. Six. So we have six stitches on here. I try to do them a bit more loose than not, just because I am going to be working back into these stitches. And because I'm going rows two through 10, this was our first row here, casting on essentially. It's not really, that's a knitting term, but kind of making our foundation base. I consider that the first round. And then from rows two through 10, we are just going to single crochet around and around and around and around those six stitches, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna show you the first couple rounds and then I'm gonna finish it off. And then I'll show you when we do our increases to expand into our hat. So essentially we're gonna turn our work and start working into the very first single crochet that we made. So what I do is I work through front loop only. I find that this looks a bit more bubbly and I enjoy how that looks more, but if you go through both loops, this will still work. However, I like front loop only. So I'm gonna go through my second round here. We're currently on our second round and for rounds two through 10, like I said, we're gonna go and just single crochet one stitch in every single one of those single crochets right there. So this is our second stitch, two. I had split my yarn, so I had to fix it. Three. Four. Five. And six. All right, you'll notice that your work kind of starts pooling in on itself and the back side is there. What I like to do is I like to fix that and just kind of push it so that the work is still facing right side out. You kind of got to squish it a little bit just to make sure that it'll do that. I also have a tendency to do another six stitches and then I'm going to add my tail so I can tell when my row ends. We are now on row three and we're going to go again. One, next stitch, two, go to the next stitch. It's very difficult for this little tip part here because it's so small. Next stitch, four, Next stitch five and last stitch of row three, six. I'm gonna take my tail and I'm actually gonna pull it through so that I can see when my beginning is so I can kind of keep track of that. And now for rows four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, I'm just gonna keep repeating this. You're gonna wanna keep going until your little witchy twitchy part is as long as you want it, honestly. So if you wanna go for a little bit longer, you can go for a little bit longer. If you want this little tip here from here, to here to be a little bit shorter, go a little bit shorter. It works out either way. So I'm going to go around until I have reached row 10. And then once I am on row 11, I will show you how I start expanding. And I will go step and row by row specifically with each of these. So I'll be right back as soon as that is done. Okay, so I now have 10 rounds of six stitches around and around and around. We're going to row 11. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my tail and I'm gonna pull it down the tube of what I just did, basically. Taking it and feeding it down, trying not to like put it into the backs of the stitches, basically. And just trying to get it to feed through the center, like so. That way, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter if it feeds through the back of the stitches in the tube. You're not gonna see it, so, all right. Here, I'm going to take my active yarn, put my chain back onto my work, and I'm gonna let my tail just kind of sit in the backdrop for a second. And what we're going to do now is we're going to essentially be increasing three stitches every single round until we reach 24 stitches around. So we're gonna go from six to nine to 12 to 15 to 18 to 21 to 24. I believe that's the 24th one. We're increasing three stitches every single round. And I'll show you exactly how I do that. I stagger my stitches. So on rounds where I have even amounts of stitches between each increase, I split them in half and then stagger them essentially. I'll show you exactly what I mean. 
So for here, we're going to single crochet one and then increase and not drop our yarn off of our hook, preferably. And then the next stitch is an increase. So an increase is when you're placing two stitches within a single stitch from the previous round. So I already have one stitch inside that stitch. I'm gonna go back inside that same one and put another one in there. So we did single crochet one, increase. Do that one more time, single crochet one, and next stitch, increase. Now things are gonna start getting a little bit easier because you're not gonna be working through two for them. And we have one more, single crochet one, and increase. So for the next round, we are going to be going from nine up to 12 and increasing three stitches amongst this. But you would do that by basically single crocheting one, single crocheting two, increase. One, two, increase. One, two, increase. However, I like to stagger my stitches. That way, this looks a bit less like I've got the same little lines going down the sides. If you don't wanna do that, that's fine, but I single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, keeping our work facing the right way out, increase, single crochet one. And so there are still two stitches between each increase. It's just staggered. That's what I mean by staggering it because now the increase from the previous round is not overlaid on top of the previous round's increase, if that makes sense. Single crochet one, increase. Single crochet one. And if you get confused at any point in time, you can go and refer to the written PDF down below linked on Ravelry. I'm going to take out my tail from where it was and I'm gonna put it through the last stitch of my previous final stitch. And now we're gonna go from six to nine, nine to 12, and we're gonna go from 12 to 15. And the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one, two, this is not a staggering row, three, and increase. So we single crochet three and then do an increase. Single crochet one, there we go that was a tight stitch two three and not split our yarn increase i'm gonna pull my yarn out a little bit more and then move these back a little bit and we have one more increase for this round one two three and increase one and two within that single stitch. We're gonna move our tail forward, like so. We just finished with 10, which was six, 11, nine, 12, <laughs> 13, which was 15. So now we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 stitches on our work. So now in the next round, we are going to single crochet. We're going to stagger. There should be four stitches between each increase on this. And the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet two, one, next stitch, two. We're going to increase the next stitch and then single crochet two, one, two. We're gonna be going from 15 up to 18. And let's do that again, one, two, increase, and you can tell because there's four stitches, four single crochet between each increase on this. One. My llama is grabbing onto my yarn over here. Two. Increase. Oh, whoops, not an increase. One, two, this is two, there we go. 
now increase my bed and then one and two moving forward our yarn we should now be at 18 stitches let's count just to make sure I always count at the end of almost every round. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We're going to be going from 18 stitches now to 21. So the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet into the next five stitches. This is not a staggering round. 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then you increase. On the sixth stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and increase. Next one. is the split three four five And do the increase on the sixth stitch. One. And not drop our yarn. There we go. Two. Three. Four. Five. And our final increase for this round. I'm going to move my tail and whack my camera in the meantime. There we go. And now we have one more final increase round for this part of the hat. We are going to single crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, three. We're staggering our increases, so we're going to put an increase in the center of our single crochets. So one, two, three, increase, one, two, three, one, two, three, increase, one, two, three, one, two, three, increase, one, two, three. So now we are going to just single crochet around for the next two rounds maintaining our 24 stitches that we have increased up to. Then I'll show you how I change my yarn so that I can do the stripe down here, and then I'll show you how we do our brim. I'll be right back as soon as I've gone around for two rounds in just the orange, maintaining our 24 stitches that we have created. Be right back. Okay, so for rows 17 and 18, we just single crocheted around for the 24 stitches that are on here right now. We're essentially going to do the same thing for rows 19 and 20. Essentially, this is where we are. The little green band is where we are in the pattern, but I am going to be changing my color. I didn't do that for over on this one. I just made it all one color. So if you're not changing color, you just go around for four rounds, but we are going to be changing the color on this hat. So I'm going to show you how I do that. What I like to do is I'm going to be changing my tones. I'm going to take my string and kind of hold it to the back like it's my active work right here. I'm going to kind of pinch it. What I like to do in order to change colors is I'm going to go into the first stitch of what would be row 19. I'm going to pull my thread, pull my yarn through it. Nope, not break it. 
There we go. I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to do a quick little slip stitch. That way everything kind of comes to a head. I'm then going to chain one and I'm going to go back inside that same stitch like so, but I'm going to go through both loops just for this one stitch. I'm going to pull through and then just start single crocheting around. I'm not going to pull my I'm not going to cut my orange yarn quite yet. I'm going to go around once at least until I decide when I'm going to do that. I like to tie it off in a way that makes it a bit more uh, concrete. It stays there. But for right now, we're going to single crochet around for all 24 of those stitches. So we keep going. We are now on row 19, basically going around going around, kind of just letting our tails hang out in the back. Oop, and I split my yarn there. This one is very old yarn, so I'm trying to use up all my old yarn so that all my new yarn I can justify getting, because a lot of it is just, A, it's hard to get new yarn, uh, to be honest, because of the yarn shortage, and B, I can't justify buying new yarn if I have all of this yarn in my house. At least I shouldn't be, anyway. <laughs> my logic brain. Then I see some nice yarn and then I... That all logic goes out the window. So. Eek. There we go. We're gonna keep going around and around and around. All 24 stitches. I keep splitting my yarn and it's very frustrating. I'm gonna undo that make sure that it's not split. getting close to the very end here and I like to just make sure that I have 24 stitches on my work. I'm not going to go through any extra weirdness. This is my last stitch right here. I'm going to go through that. I'm going to pull out some more yarn and then I'm going to work through this stitch that I made right there. Now that I am, I'm going to go a couple more stitches into the 20th round. But now that I have gone over my bump, essentially, I'm going to take my two tails, the one that is from when I added it on and the one that was active for the orange. I'm not going to cut my orange yarn at all. I'm going to, however, double knot the work right here and tie it tight that way. When you look at where it joined, it's fairly seamless. It does not it's not glaring like you would think it would be. I'm going to kind of just let this tail exist inside. I'm going to kind of plop it inside. If you want to hide it through the backs of your work, you are free to do that. I might do that actually. And I'm going to go into the rest of row 20 and just single crochet around. We're also going to do the exact same thing when we go back to our orange yarn because we're going to go back to our orange yarn for the brim of this hat. We're going to keep going, and I think I'm just going to fast forward this part. Okay, so we've reached the last stitch. We're going to single crochet this one piece here, and then we're going to go in, pick up our orange yarn just like we did before and I'm going to do another slip stitch. We're going to kind of hold our gray. I'm going to do a little chain and so here we are going to increase every single one of these 24 stitches. We're going to be going from 24 up to 48 which is intense I know but we're going to go around and just put two single crochet like so button every single stitch. So the next one, you place two single crochet inside the next stitch, go into the next one, we're going to put two inside that one, and so on and so forth until you have 48 stitches. We're going to keep going around and around, and again, I think I'm just going to fast forward through this point because watching me tediously do increases does not sound like a lot of fun to me.
we're working on the last couple of stitches and you can really see now how the brim when you expand it out every single stitch it makes it go straight out and it looks more like a brim because you're essentially making a brim which is you know the point but after this you're basically just going to single crochet around for two rounds you're going to double check that you have 48 stitches i mean if you're off a couple it's not like the end of the world just make sure that when you're increasing you're putting two stitches inside every single one of these stitches from your previous round that way it will pop out and look very extreme mucho mucho extreme we're going to go through there and now for the final two rounds we're going to go around for all 48 of these stitches around and around and around i am however going to show you how i do the invisible fasten off i have a tutorial for that also down below so if you get confused by what i'm doing i can go a bit more in depth there but for now i'm just going to go around for all 48 of these stitches twice so two more times and then I'll be right back and I'll show you how I fasten off. Just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like when you've gone around just for one round. I, however, like it when it kind of curls up on itself, so that's why I go the extra round. So I'm gonna go around 48 more stitches and then I'll show you how I fasten off. I stop on the stitch right before the last one. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. All right, so we are on the stitch before the very last. So basically this last round, I only went around for 47 stitches. I'm going to cut a decently long tail, so probably about eight inches or so. And what I like to do in order to make an invisible fasten off, this makes it so that you cannot see, I call it my seamless fasten off, is I'm going to pull my tail all the way through we are going to take my darning needle and I already cut by the way my black yarn but I left a long tail for that one too and I'll show you how I hide that as soon as this one's done but I'm going to take my tail for my end here and I'm going to take my darning needle with my work my, my active thread on there we're going to skip what would be our last stitch right here so stitch number 48 and we're going to go through stitch number one of what would be the next round. We're going to go through from the front of your stitch to the back, like so. And now we are going to go into our very last single crochet that we made. So the 47th stitch, we're going to go through the center of that stitch into the back. I have an entire tutorial that goes a bit more slow when it comes to this, but this is called the invisible fasten off because essentially what you're doing is you're creating a stitch here. So you cannot tell what it is and where it is basically. You tighten it to however you want it to look. So I want mine to look like that. And I'm gonna take my tail, going to work it through the back of some of these stitches. I'm gonna go through these two. I'm gonna go back up those two. Then I'm going to go back down these, just all of them, and then I'll probably be pretty happy. I like to weasel it through enough that it won't come, that if it does come undone a little bit, it won't super duper matter. All right, so I have some tails. I have some tails from the black um, band there, so I'm going to cut that tail. The less tails I have in the way, the better. I'm going to take my tail from up here. A, I'm going to move all my black tails out so that I can know that those are ones that I'm working on. Because this is going down the entire little stringy tube there, I'm just going to cut it so that it's going to stay there, basically. So that one, that I my starting string, is done. And now all I need to do is work these into the backs of the stitches. So I'm going to take my first tail and I'm going to weasel it through the backs of these stitches just like I did before. So I'm doing that for all of these essentially. Eek! I'm gonna do it for this one as well. I'm gonna go, even though I already had stuff in there, I'm just gonna go through back and forth. I like to do it at least twice. If I can get it to go a third time, then I'll try to do it a third time, like a third line basically. Two and then three. I'm gonna go through that. I'm gonna finish off on a part of the black beam there. And we're gonna cut that with our scissors. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move this out of the way so it's a little less confusing. There we go. We're gonna take this 
and do the exact same thing. Go through once. My stitches were tight there, so there we go. Twice. And three times we'll chat. There we go. There we are. And you can't see it in the front at all. That band is mostly seamless. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. This looks pretty cute and I'm going to cut that and that is all there is to this cute little spooky witch hat. It will fit on any of the Among Us. It'll fit on your Lunas, aka also your little pumpkin jack here if you would like to hide his little stem like I said earlier. It's super cute. I probably wouldn't use this specific hat on Jack though because, well, it's the color of his skin or his pumpkin flesh basically. As strange as that sounds, I'm sure. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, in my next video, I'm going to go over how to make this cute little leaf hat extension for the Among Us character. I'm going to show you how I make this and also how I attach it. I will be sewing this on so I won't be able to make it so that it is removable, which I know a lot of people it's kind of a bummer. I was trying to, f I've been racking my brain about it and honestly it's keeping me from putting this out in the first place. So I'd rather just show how to make the leaf hat and if somebody else figures out a really clever way to make it so that it is removable then you know all the power to them. But I wanted to be able to get the pattern out there at the very least. It's the same little leaf technique that I do for the pumpkin head. But that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope everybody has a nice and spooky Halloween and everything is enjoyable. Enjoy the full moon, the second one we get for this month. I'm pretty excited about it. Be sure to pop over to our Patreon and our PayPal and our Etsy and our Instagram, all of those links, everything, all the self-promotion that I could put out there will be linked down below. And until next time, guys, bye.